Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. But the fun doesn't stop there, no sorry. Every few episodes, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will ask you, the listener, to vote on which movie they will play as an RPG, recorded in video and in glorious black and white, and brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's stop the show! <laughs> Folklore does have the best of those moments where everyone's having a conversation, and then suddenly everybody's conversations pause at that exact yeah, moment. Yeah, the music changes yeah. over. And that one person yeah. still saying something. hasn't been there before. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is my favorite moments at the club. And that's why yeah. I never sit on fire hydrants. <laughs> 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 really, buddy? Really? <laughs> Fuck, we're here for a movie, right? Yeah, we we are here for a movie. We're here for a fucking really good movie, actually. I, I have to agree. This this was an amazing movie. Was this was this your first time seeing this? This was. I had seen uh, the second. I, I'm just going to say what it is. John Wick. Yes, John Wick. Um, Guys, I hated not having this movie in my life. It was amazing. Is this the first time you saw it? <laughs> I saw it a couple weeks ago. Okay. It was All the right. first time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm surprised you guys have never seen this movie. This is a fucking amazing movie. You know my thoughts on Keanu. Yeah, I know your thoughts um, on Keanu. He is, he is not of the hatred of he who shall not be named. <laughs> but I was, I just, I've always thought of him as an unconvincing actor. I can see that. I, um, I agree with that. Especially whenever he opened his mouth. I can see that. I this, still like him. This is the movie that convinced me that maybe he's still not a great speaking actor. But this movie convinced him, me that his physical acting mm-hmm. is amazing. Yeah, considering he's in his fifties now. Yeah, yeah. What what he did with uh, with his his wounded, mm-hmm. he he can convey things with his posture and his body language and his struggles to get back onto his feet mm-hmm. that are just incredible. Yeah this this movie. Oh, there's so much going on in this movie all at once <laughs> that I just love. And yeah, it's... He did good Keanu. Yeah, Keanu Reeves did a great job. He had a really good cast with him also. And he had some... He had directors that had uh, been in... They they were in the in the stunt industry with The Matrix and, mm-hmm. and, and Point Break and um, worked with the Wachowskis a lot. Point Break is a guilty pleasure. Yeah, I did is. like it that really movie is. too. I've seen that one. Oh, oh you should. You oh, really we, should. You, you could run that is as that, a game is that easily. Keanu? Yeah, it's yeah. Keanu Reeves. Okay. I like Surfer Keanu. Cops. Yeah, Surfer Cops. There was a remake here a couple years Whoa. ago. This is completely <laughs> shit. Um, uh, and it had... Um, um, I've had the time of my life. Fucking uh, Roadhouse, um, Dirty Dancing, Patrick Swayze in it also. You know, I like co- how you started with completely time of side life. tangent. <laughs> I have this guy. I have this guy online in my circles, and I don't personally know him, but he's big in the online Google Plus gaming circles. Mm-hmm. And his name is Bill Logan. And every time I see his name, <laughs> Ted Theodore my Logan, my brain, my brain, <laughs> my brain says his name is Bill S. Preston Esquire, Ted Theodore Logan. That's what my brain sees every as it time should, I see that. as it should. Thanks, Bill. You know, there's S. not Preston Esquire, <laughs> Ted <laughs> Theodore <laughs> Logan, <laughs> Wild Stallions. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I'd like to say that that my suspicion of Keanu wasn't just from that movie. Everyone starts in a dumb movie. That's not his fault. Yeah. But it was some of the other ones he did where he he just he never he he does brooding well. Oh yeah, he does brooding a lot. He has a, a, a he long does brooding a lot face. better than David Borneas from Angel in my opinion. Okay. I'm going to take your word on that. Okay. But um it was just like when he tried to do Shakespeare with fucking the god of Shakespeare on <laughs> Kenneth Ken- Branagh. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, like See, opposite I, Emma Thompson. I liked, I liked that version, not as much as I liked. No, it was, it was a great version. I'm yeah. just saying, he was very wooden. Mm-hmm. He was. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a very. Ted, he actually got his Esquire in that. I, I <laughs> think he just he doused himself in Viagra. He was stiff that whole <laughs> fucking movie. I think he just oh, totally swam through the river. It's, of it's Viagra. like you, you have your chance to do a serious movie with mm-hmm. serious players, right? Yeah. That's supposed to be your breakout shining moment where you see, look, I can do other things. I'm not just fucking excellent adventure. Mm-hmm. And he was just excellent adventure. And that's where I kind of got that this is 
who you are. I, that happened to Jim Carrey in a good way. I think what was Truman Show when Ed Harris. I hated that movie. Well, that's fine. I loved the Truman Show, I, but I like the Truman Show. I, I did too because I'm borderline yeah. paranoid to begin with. So yeah. everyone is in fact watching it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, wow. I don't think I've ever talked to anyone else who has felt that way about that movie. Oh yeah, of like it's a great having movie. a feeling of like is this is this. <laughs> Am I really watching this movie, or is everybody watching me watch this movie? But anyway, Jesus. I thought he did a good job I did as too. a serious actor. Yeah, that was his in, breakout. And then he went to uh, Eternal Sunshine. Yeah, that was an yeah. amazing yeah. movie. So he proved like Robin that Williams he could do more did than the comedy. same thing. Dead mm-hmm. Poets. I mean, mm-hmm. there was yeah. one of my top ten favorite movies yeah. of all time. There's, uh, th- there's, and I, I just I never felt that Keanu did that until I saw this. This is, a- and then I was like, oh, that's what everyone sees. He in you. he he has. Uh, he can emote a lot. Physically, he can. Yes, yes. <laughs> physically. I mean, his like you said, his posture when he's when he's damaged. Well, like uh, yeah, <laughs> when he's when he's leaning up against a wall and he's struggling to his feet and his leg is cocked in this hugely uncomfortable thing, mm-hmm. and he's like stumbling and he's on the side of his foot, mm-hmm. stumbling, not dragging his feet, stumbling like you'd see most actors do, yeah, convincingly, but. He was actually putting himself in physical positions of an enormous amount of pain and discomfort to bring it off physically. And I respect the hell out of that. Yeah. I mean, he did a great job in this movie. And one of the things that I I've really like about the movie, uh, just with his character, yeah. and it just kind of harkens back to you saying that he, does, he can't really act very well. And uh-huh. I think he can, personally. But the character, where the character has come from, where the character, what the character has been through... And where he's going, there's not a lot of dialogue. And I think that works exceptionally well for oh, Keanu Reeves. Agreed. But also works amazingly well for the movie in general. I I want to make a weird court uh, parallel here. This movie felt to me, uh, what is this, three years ago, four years ago? It came 2014, out? yeah. 2014. Okay. Um, that if you were in high school right now when mm-hmm. that movie came out in 2014... This movie may have meant or inspired you in a way, or just felt like what the crow felt like to me in high school. Because I see that parallel. Compl- there, there's there's it. something about a revenge story with an implacable hero, or, or at least I don't want to say hero. Maybe protagon- pro- <laughs> protagonist. What do you mean by implacable? Give me, me more about this. Uh, meaning that he will not be stopped. He d- he just goes. Okay. I mean, they had completely different attitudes. Oh, though. yeah, and I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, but I see, yeah. I see the parallel of yeah. the, the revenge there, there's, story parallel. There's, there's something admirable about someone who just sets out to do it. Yeah. You know? And yeah. will not be stopped no matter the odds. Who was really capable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we oh, right. That's background. back to your thing. You like capable people like doing capable, capable people things. Doing <laughs> yeah. capable things. I didn't feel that he was super heroic. I felt that he was really skilled. Yeah. And he looked, you know, he was clearly in his, in his years. Yeah. He was an aged assassin, not yeah. like ancient, like some of the other people they were encountering, but he was clearly had been doing this for a long time. And I do like the, the procedural slow reveal of more facts about his background as people start talking yeah. about him. God, I'm somebody's like, oh, this. wait, you shot who? Who? Yeah. <gasps> like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to bungle this, but there's an old saying that says, uh, Experience and treachery beats uh, youth and energy every so time. It's, it's, speed, I'm, yeah. I'm butchering yeah. that. But um, I, my dad used got to more say, insurance. My, my dad yeah, used to yeah. say it all the time. <laughs> um, Age and experience beats uh, whatever. But uh, this was very much a case of whatever I just said that I butchered. Yeah. Uh, Let's throw that one on the cutting room floor and move <laughs> on. <laughs> I, I, I liked him being capable. I yeah. liked that no, I he agree. was like, really good at what he was not like. And, but he wasn't flawless. But he was no. really close. Yeah, yeah. Really I, I, close. I like. There's a, there's a, there's a lot, movie wise, story wise that I like about this. Mm-hmm. There's a lot technical side of this movie that I fucking adore. Oh yeah, I didn't have anything. Uh, Foley sound design, cinematography, spot on. Well, yeah. there are little nods if you really know where. If you really pay attention, uh-huh. um, you see that you know that this is not in our world. This is a completely fictional world. There's this is not. The world that you and I know. I mean, is it? It well, it's not like Earth Two or Earth Three, right. but it's it's very much the whole. Everything is even down to the camera shots. It's graphic novel. 
it might as well be a comic. Book. It, it, it is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the, from the camera angles to how things are Maybe set. That's up, why I liked it so uh, much. To the very wide shots of like mm-hmm. him in in the kitchen, sitting on the floor. That very wide shot. The shots of seeing what he's doing day to day through the windows. Like you're you're just an observer to that world. Those are the little things that I really, I didn't even really think like. about that. I just thought that I liked it. It felt a lot like either Queen and Country or One Hundred Bullets, and or uh, those high high action right bullet. What I mm-hmm. what I've always called a bullet drama. Okay. Right. Yeah. And that the cast is great too. I yeah. mean, the entire cast is really good. Um, but the, the color palettes I also loved in mm-hmm. this movie and. There are all, I've seen this movie so many times. You start to really there's there's a, there's a and I know I'm getting ahead of myself. There's the the scene in the club where he you know where the O club yeah the the Red Circle Club yeah where he goes on that killing spree. Oh, it's the was it the Red Circle? Yeah, I, I it thought it was circle. for orgasm because they're all like. <laughs> <laughs> but if you notice, if you've watched it enough, or if you if you if you're really astute at noticing things right off the bat. Every person that he shoots in that club is a fucking red shirt. Literally, they have a red shirt on. No way. Yes. I go, did not catch that. Yep, go back I, and watch it. There's watch a it. Star Trek nod there. Every single bad guy that he kills has a red shirt. I thought it was kind of neat. That is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so before getting too far ahead of ourselves, the basic outline of the movie is ex assassin. Right, yeah. ex assassin gets married. He falls in love he, with a he, good he, woman. Yeah, with a very good woman who's played by Bridget Moyn- we, Moynihan. We which, assume he brings out the better part of him. You know, there's 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 always the that story in the background of uh, you wanted out, so yeah. we gave you these tasks to get out, and you did them. Impossible tasks. Impossible tasks. Like, like he says, he gives them the tasks that could not sequel. be done. sequel. I God, I did not like the sequel. I, mm. I hit it in reverse order. I actually really liked the sequel because I hadn't watched the first one. Okay. Well, we'll if we ever want to do the sequel, I, I can fucking rage on that one because okay. I don't like the sequel. I mean, I do, but mm, I don't okay. like it. <laughs> so, uh, aged assassin finds love, gets out of, you know, basically tells his bosses, I want out. Here are these tasks. If you do them, fine, you can get out. And he gets out, and he falls in love. She, you know, the the movie never really says what happens, but I mean, they, I, I'm, I'm assuming she gets cancer of some kind. It, it looked like that, or some sort of just uh, what are they? It's, uh, fuck, I've been reading Victorian naval fiction. Uh, it's not a brain st- aneurysm. Okay, yeah, it looked like because she did just collapse. Yeah, yeah. embolism. Maybe? Embolism. Yeah, Maybe. that's okay. What yeah, okay, because she just collapsed. One of those medical words. <laughs> They were at the waterfront. She collapses, and I, 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 I like just the little snippets. The, the, the director, the, um, the 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 westerns that Clint Eastwood did um, were really good at just giving you a little. The Sergio Leone, hint, yeah, 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 and and Kurosawa also um, giving you little hints of this is what's been going on. The and, less is more was yes. really played in this, um, yeah. and and. There was this one beautiful shot of him in her room as he's saying goodbye and kissing her on yeah, the forehead. Yeah. And you are you are a detached observer because you're outside of the room looking through yeah. the glass. And there's a lot of that and I and I liked it. Um so and then he she gives him uh sends him a help to help to grieve. Here's a dog, and then the dog gets killed, brutally killed, after he didn't want to give up his Mustang. Oh, fucking so, what the, the blood stain is the yeah. dog crawls to I know. Right? <laughs> Here's the thing. I knew that was coming before seeing it. Um and I fast forwarded to that part. Mm. Yep. As soon as the dog appears in the movie, I just fast forward. I fast forward it because I knew it was gonna happen mm-hmm. and I knew why. So I fast forward until I saw a scene at a gas station. So I I, I wanted to see that scene because fuck the yawn. And then <laughs> I fast forward ahead until until after after the fight. No, no, just after the uh, the revelation of the dog's death, because mm-hmm. I didn't want to see it. Right. Yeah. Because there's a website. It's called Does the Dog Die? And it is a website that you oh, can go God. to. It is a spoiler-free website. Otherwise, spoiler-free website mm-hmm. if you're the kind of person that doesn't want to watch a movie where an animal dies. 
So it's a database. Nice. I think there's other aspects of it too, like you know, does somebody get violated? And so trigger warning kind of stuff. Like people can search for the things that that trigger them. Mm-hmm. But I think it really it started as does the does the dog die? Now, whenever I see a new movie, <laughs> mm-hmm. and at the moment I see an animal in that movie, I pause that movie, <laughs> go to that website, and find out if the dog dies. Does it have like a time? Like at what point in the movie the dog dies? Like no, it doesn't. But I, just be don't, good. I don't care. Okay. Like, there was a new horror movie, the uh, spoilers, Evil Dead, mm-hmm. the, the new remake of Evil yeah. Dead. Like, in the first five minutes, they introduce a dog. I pause the movie. Does the dog die? It's Brutally. A fantastic sight. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to watch the rest of this movie. <laughs> so, there are also a lot of little nods. If you notice, the. he, So, John Wick is cool because he is an older assassin and he's done. He's done his life. And one of the things that I really liked about. Just the storytelling for the movie was you don't see this ex- very wealthy assassin. I mean, look at the house. And he made all this money from making role playing games, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God damn that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, it took me a second. So, okay, sorry. There's, there's no, a role playing game a designer named John Wick. Yeah, I know. When he's, he's really good friends with a buddy of mine. Anyway, um, his house. <laughs> yeah, so you don't see him out and about on the town, like living up this no. expensive life. You you see shots of John Wick walking through his house, getting coffee and in pajamas, and it's an incredibly it's cold very mundane. house too. It's like I have succeeded. I need this to show that I've succeeded. I'm not enjoying this. I just have it. Yeah. Well, I think, I think, he, I think he and his wife enjoyed it until. She died, and then it became very cold. That's the feeling that I got. Yeah, too. I there was a lot. More I didn't get that either because um, her yeah. her night table was still set up the way she had it. Right? Oh, they all saw the, that. The, her whole bathroom the side was of the still bathroom. set. Up. Yeah. But I don't think there was. It was enjoyable because the whole house just seemed cold and Spartan. Now he left her stuff alone, which leads me to assume that whatever she put in that house would still be up as well. well she probably decorated it. Yeah, but it was still. How recent Empty. was her death? It was it, very we recent. We don't know. No, the, we don't. The only thing, well, kind of, because she dies, and then she two scenes, two scenes later, they're having a wake at the house. Mm-hmm. That's what that the party was. Yeah. And then at the end of that same night, the puppy is delivered. Like a week, then. So I think maybe she's been a week. <laughs> yeah, maybe, a week. maybe she's maybe been yeah. gone a week. Yeah. yeah. The original cut of the movie was over two and a half hours. And there was a lot more background set up, um, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. When I watched it, like a, before we even started this, I watched it, and uh, I was reading about some of the scenes to the point that I kind of want to get the DVD just so I can watch the extended scenes. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I don't think they're on there. What? Yeah, I think that's would be it would be a director's cut, and I don't think it's out. <sighs> <sighs> that's disappointing. I know. Uh, I want more of this. Yeah, it, it was it was a very interesting. And world. everyone has told me the second movie was terrible, so I'm like, uh, it wasn't. It just it it it, it, was, it felt like a fucking Vampire the Masquerade movie. I thought it was good. There are parts I are thought. Good. I thought it's like the only going thing, to Elysium. And the only thing that made this movie better than uh, the first one was, and he talks too much. Um, no, not really. No, in the second one, he does. No, not really. Yeah, he does. Nah. Well, we're not um, talking about the second one. We're here to <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just going to say the only thing that made it different was he didn't have an emotional connection with anything. The dog was called Dog, and it was the same well, the dog. dog he was pulls the best. Up. The dog was the best part of the whole movie, in but my opinion. This, does the dog live in the yes, second yes, movie? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. might go watch that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that that was the only difference is he didn't have an emotional connection. He was just wronged, which yeah. I like. I no. would love a series of over the top. Bloody killing spree movies. Well, you know about what, a man. <laughs> you know what? You're going to get your wish because they're doing another movie. Excellent. And they're doing a TV series and they're doing a comic series. Excellent. So you get I'm all the blood you want because I believe people that do damage your property should be killed. <laughs> Did you see the spoof sort of spinoff Keanu? No, there's a movie with Key and Peele called Keanu, where a gangster steals their cat. Oh, I heard about this. <laughs> it's a little kid. I heard about this. It's basically uh, a comedic kind of spoof, yeah, right? Off on of this, yeah, yeah. A, a scary movie as yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've already said we have Keanu Reeves, who plays the title character of John Wick. Mm-hmm. Uh, alignment, L- lawful, lawful neutral. <laughs> I would say lawful neutral. Nah, evil. Why evil? Because he didn't vet the henchman that he slaughtered by the bushel. 
those have moms and parents and puppies and kittens uh, and cats. Oh, and... that's tough. Yeah. Now, if he had just gone after the yeah, three, neutral... and oh, that were, that would have been they, one thing. They were wearing, but red, he did cause so a lot free, of. Free <laughs> he, no, no, no. <laughs> he did. He did cause a lot of chaos. So, what about chaotic evil? No, no definitely no. not he, chaotic. No, he followed well, a code. Followed he, a fucking, yeah. okay. he, he was right. he was going exactly by the code he lived under. And the big brains on you guys. So, <laughs> I will actually say that he is aberrant. From the Palladium. No, I think. we're doing D and D. D and D. You know what? No, I'm going to read this real quick. I've been wanting to read this for a long time. So right. here, I'm going to read this a lot. Aberrant. The cliche that there is no honor among thieves is false when dealing with the aberrant character. They are driven to attain goals through force, power, and intimidation. Yet they stand apart from the norm with personal code of ethics. They will always keep their word of honor. They will lie and cheat those not worthy of respect. May or may not kill an unarmed foe. Not kill, but may harm or kidnap an innocent, particularly a child. Uh, never kills for pleasure. Does not resort to inhumane treatment of prisoners, but torture, although distasteful, is a necessary means of extracting information. Never tortures for pleasure. May or may not help someone in need. Works with others to attain goals. Respects honor and self-discipline and never betrays a friend. Don't read my alignment out loud over the internet. <laughs> So I'm going to set his alignment as Matthew. <laughs> so then we also then we go into Michael Nyquist. I think that's how you pronounce his yeah. last name. He is actually Finnish. What did you? I'm sorry. What was your take, Dusty? What did you? You didn't offer one. I I, I honestly would. You guys are going to like shout no 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 no. You're completely wrong. I think he's just just true neutral. I was thinking that too, but the code of ethics, the code, the the code, yeah. kind of led me towards law. Again, this is a fictional world. Yeah, this, completely fictional his, world. Yeah, his, the his world, world that he is part of has its own codes. Yeah, so. and he did not break it even when they were in yep. in the uh, fucking what is it called the the hotel? The, oh, the, uh, Continental. the Continental. Yes, yeah. Uh, that's what led me to law was because he respected the Continental's code, mm-hmm. even though it stayed outside of what he wanted. Yeah. So, uh, Michael Nyquist, who I believe is Finnish, playing a Russian, and there are some areas of the movie where he. He he took a lot of Russian classes so he could speak Russian, but in some of them he meshed his his uh, native language into Russian, uh, which was kind of interesting. Um, and if you if you if you're again one of those things that if you if you look at like with the red shirts, if you notice yeah. almost every scene that uh, he's in, you can count how many times he takes his jacket off and yeah. puts it back on, which I thought was pretty funny. He's playing. Vigo Tarasov, the the antagonist's father, um, who does he's a he's a great he a job. bad guy, yeah, uh, and just I mean, where's that evil beard? Well, too, yeah, yeah. I, that was good. Yeah. Evil when, beard. when this movie came out, I I initially thought that the the guy that was going to play the Russian is is the default Russian evil bad guy who was in the Saint. Um, and I forget his name off the top of my head. But every time there's like a needed bad Russian guy, he's, he's got longer hair. He's got a thick accent, thick Russian accent. He's the go-to. And I was really glad that this guy pulled off the bad Russian guy. And I liked the little things. Uh, like you don't really – like there's a point where you see the tattoos. And mm-hmm. you don't up until towards the very end with um, Willem Dafoe's character. Like, so you can see his history. And I much like the – just the the acknowledging that my son is going to die as he's like taking yeah. puffs of, of of marijuana, the marijuana. Um, yeah, so. dude, that was awkward right there. <laughs> <laughs> he had that reefer madness, he kids. Had the 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 marijuana. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> fucking Christ. <laughs> he was really good. Yeah, he he was he was good. there and there are some there are some ad lib parts also. So when there's that part where Keanu Reeves goes to the church, the the vault oh, in the yeah, church, yeah. and then he takes that fucking hellfire triple barreled shotgun yeah. to the to the suburban, when uh, Vigo goes, be cool, be cool, be cool. That was apparently <laughs> all ad libbed, and it was great. It's all cool, 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 cool. Um, but yeah, Michael Nyquist, you did a great job. I loved your character in this movie, and I was I was happy to see. I was I happy did, to see him not die at the end. I, what? He didn't die at the end. The, he didn't. No, he was alive. He didn't. I could have sworn he died. Right I there? took it. I took it as he because <laughs> you, you do him right there on the you, on that dock. You didn't unless he died after the, the 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 movie ended. You don't. Yeah, he does the going still thing in the yeah, rain. Yeah, see, yeah. I With took the it. Knife in his neck. I 
took it as him still being like they just parted ways. No, so, I, think, I, I, th- I think he was dead. I think he was dead. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I maybe I'm wrong. Um, I just, I interpreted it as yeah. they just they it was a stalemate. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's that's not how I picked up on okay. it. <laughs> yeah. so well, I, I didn't see that. I, I'll but... tell you what when you, you when he right. I would have done things completely different than him this whole movie though. Mm-hmm. Like if my brother uh excuse son. me, if my son, who will forever just be Theon Greyjoy. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> um Re- fucking what's what's it? Alfie <laughs> Alfie yeah, Allen. Alfie, Alfie Allen. So I, I kinda wrote down a little thing how I thought that phone call should go mm-hmm. where he calls oh, it. Oh, that was a great fucking phone yeah. call. That first one. He would be like, Hey John, it's Vigo. And Vigo would go, and uh, John would go, hello, Vigo, you have something I want. Something, some things, John. My rotten, drunk, spineless son and his cronies are tied to chairs in my basement. <laughs> John and would go, yeah, but that, no, 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 I'm not done. <laughs> and John would go, really? There you go. Screw it, John. I'm still young enough to have another kid. I could have two kids. <laughs> I could have like five more kids before I'm impotent. <laughs> Do you want me to lay out some medical equipment, or do you want to use your own hands for this one? <laughs> John would go, Jesus, Vigo. <laughs> to which you'd reply, fuck that little shit. He's all yours. I'll be the right end, over. End, Cheers, John. End movie right there. <laughs> Seriously, he was, he knew what this man was. Oh, uh, he Vigo, was a, yeah. He was an idiot to let him, and his son, yeah. like, like. Vigo well, his seems... son didn't even know, had no idea who the boogeyman was. Vigo's character, uh, Vigo, yeah, yeah. Uh, seemed disciplined, mm-hmm. intelligent, and relatively smart. Well, he came his from that old son, school Russian yeah. mob. Was yeah. a spoiled little shit. I would have, I would have written him off in a goddamn second. Fuck that kid. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why, how that kid got to be that way. Because you, you look at the dad, and you see that the dad is capable, mm-hmm. is intelligent, and doesn't brook failure. Disciplines his Disciplines. kid as well. Yeah. Fucking whack the shit out of oh him. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, I love the scene of him, like, ro- he, like, he yeah. punches him. He's down on the ground. He's, like, throwing up. And then you just you see Vigo just, okay, I'm going to take off the cufflinks. I'm going to nicely <laughs> roll up the sleeve. Because I'm going to punch my you again. jacket. Handing it to fucking the yeah. the henchman insur- number three. no no the insurance mayhem guy oh yeah that's who that was dean winters by the way that's yeah, yeah. but Man. uh i i just thought he was smarter than that and if i was in that situation i'd be like you done fucked up kid also you're fucked up enough to kill a puppy over a car fuck you yeah <laughs> you know yeah i i may be aberrant but i have hard limits and puppies are one of them so vigo <laughs> uh alignment uh, lawful, lawful evil, evil. evil. Yeah. another lawful evil. Yeah. Okay, I don't think there was very I many agree. people here that I'd put in the good category. I can't true. think of a single person. The that I puppy, would mark good. and if I got more of a read on the wife, mm-hmm. maybe I, the wife was good. Yeah, everyone There's else, no doubt about that. The wife was good. Everyone else is neutral and down. <laughs> and, and and I think I think John had made a transition into the light ah, because nah. of the wife, I but it was always so. there. I mean, there was that. There's that great shot. Of when everything has gone, when he's like, "Okay, I'm bringing Wick back," and he takes and the he's sledge in the shower. Yeah. No, 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 not even then. When he's just in the shower, bef- as he's getting ready, and it's you see the tattoos on his back, and it's like there's that switch of he's gone from being John to just being Wick, the boogeyman. I, you know, honestly, I don't think he changed. I think evil people can love. I think evil people can have skills. I think he was trying to change. Yeah, it doesn't make him good though. <laughs> okay. Hitler was a painter, man. <laughs> I mean, uh, that doesn't make Godwin him a good right person. There. We brought Godwin in tonight. <laughs> oh, right. No, I wasn't comparing him to Hitler. That's not Godwin's law. Yeah, I'm, no. I'm just saying that there there I are no you. one-dimensional characters. Okay. I mean, he can be bad and still be admirable. Okay. So uh, you're saying... Go ahead. I, I'm no, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sticking with everything I've ever said. No, I'm not going to go there. I, right. like, I, like no, I was about villain. to say something bad. Then we have Alfie Allen, who plays Theon Greyjoy in, in Game of Thrones. Um, I'm glad you led with that, because sometimes you say like these really obscure movies where they yeah, stop. I'm going to stop doing that. I'm, I'm not really doing the bullet point things anymore. Right, cool. So uh, Alfie Allen, in my opinion, is not enough of an actor uh, <laughs> to 
carry his name and everyone know like Keanu Reeves. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to have a, a, a laundry list of movies that Keanu Reeves has done. If yeah, you, you know who he is. Yeah, uh, Michael Nyquist. Okay, maybe. Um, Alfie Allen. You need. You need to who again? Exactly. Theon. Uh, so Theon. Yeah, Theon, <laughs> who's playing Eosif, uh Vigo's son, the whiniest little fucking whelp I've ever seen I, in a movie. I hope, I hope he doesn't get typecast, because that's all I've seen him do. Is is just the this, two things I've seen him do. Is, of a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Chaotic yeah. evil. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, that's I'll what agree I with that. Um, I, I, I liked his introduction of the, I, I'm trying to be a thug. You know, uh, coming up to the car with the hood and the jacket and the cigarette. You know, he's, he's holding, it's not how you would normally smoke a cigarette. It's holding some weird fucking I see a lot of Russians it's, smoke it's cigarettes. It's the in Slavic this. gangster way. Yeah. Is okay. It? Thank you. Well, it's, yeah. it's an internet meme. There's a number oh, of Slavic okay, gangster memes that. online. Yeah. There's nothing that's against Russians. I just that's how I always. It, it, yeah. I don't really know if it's true or not. I just do see the meme um, online. My uh, I have family that live in a Russian community, and that's how I always see them smoking cigarettes with that overhanded. Yeah, with that overhanded, or it's like held underhand, like like you're trying to pinch something underneath your huh. fucking taint. <laughs> the tight smoke. <laughs> well, he's, some people like that cock smoked, you know. <laughs> oh, bravo. bravo. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, that, that was um, I, I'm bringing it back. Let, let's, I, let's... I, I, I didn't really. I didn't. Con- I, I connected. I wanted him dead for the first for 60 the first, seconds. Yeah. Yeah. I did not connect mouth. with that character yeah. like em- on an emotional level. For I know, no, no, maybe not supposed to. Yeah, you're supposed to wish him dead. But I just, I was like. He I want a vehicle for vengeance. Dead now I'm like yeah. I'm glad you pushed aside from killing the dog. I'm glad you fucking pushed him. Um yeah. now yes, what? So I know I did say in a previous episode that I prefer my villains to have layers mm-hmm. and to have intentions to be able so I can like dig into them and kind of see their side of the thing. There was no layers here. His whole existence was really to give story to the father. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. No, I agree. Completely. He was a layer of the father to me. Like he was just like some little fucking piss ant. But he was really he wasn't the villain. He was just a pawn. Yeah, he was the catalyst. Is what yeah. he was. Al- Alfie was the last level fight before getting to the boss fight. <laughs> That's really what he was. <laughs> Alfie was the quest giver. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he was yeah. the quest giver, and if he was considered a fight, he was one of those hinge, one of those like one of those uh, target villains mm-hmm. that you're going after in the game that you kill in a cutscene. Yeah, he had a okay. yellow ring or a yellow health bar. Okay, he didn't yeah. have a red health <laughs> no, bar. That's, that's he, yeah, okay. he was all right, all right, all right. that's that's good. Uh, <laughs> William Defoe next? No, oh, we'll go get to him. Uh, William Defoe, we'll, we'll get to him. Um, there's that that scene. Where he takes the car, be the, the the Mustang, the Mustang boss, which there were two for this movie, and they were told, do not scratch them. <laughs> yeah. Do not scratch them. Um, and the scenes where Keanu Reeves was at the airport getting out of frustration, spinning, yeah. drifting, that's actually Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. Up until the point where the Mustang almost slams into the, the bulldozers or whatnot, yeah. that's a stunt driver at that point. Um, and As it should be. Yeah. It's expensive. Though yeah, the, um, I looked up the the cost of both of those both of those Mustangs, yeah, and they were uh, the main one that was used. Like I'm, wait, I'm gonna scene. take a guess. Twenty. Keep going. Really? Yeah, yeah. For sixty nine. Yeah, keep going. That's a that's a boss. Yeah, keep 20 going. Twenty million? No, twenty thousand. No, keep going. No. Yeah, it was like no, six, that, that, sixty eight thousand really? dollars for one of those. Yeah, completely restored. Yeah, I can see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a beautiful car. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, um, I but, liked the older one. I didn't like the newer one that they gave him at the end. I was like, "This is just too like." Well, neither I, did he. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a charger. That was a charger at the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I want to talk about. There's a scene that I want to talk about, but I, I'll get to it when we get to that other character. So Willem Dafoe. One God, my, he was great. one of my favorite actors. We'll, we'll, we'll get to. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm I'm kind of all over the place with this movie because I really fucking like it. Uh, Willem Dafoe <laughs> played Marcus, another <laughs> oh, aged God. assassin. So good. Which I like in the beginning. There's that. There's that nod of history between the two. You know, at the funeral. You know, I was like, "Sorry to hear about your yeah. wife. How you been?" You know, and take you care. honestly thought he was gunning for him too. I for, for yeah. yeah yeah. His face was so unreadable. Well, that, that's Willem the foe. No, that's yeah. yeah. great. He, he, he was, yeah, he, he did a good he job. He was defoeing all over. He was getting the job to go against him. All over the table. Everything that he was doing was like that son of a bitch. 
Yeah. The son of a bitch. Oh, oh, yes. He came through. Yeah. The <laughs> the scene where And he uh, had a good death too, a good yeah. Viking death. The scene where where Vigo goes and talks to him and says, I'll give you the contract for mm-hmm. like two million dollars. Yeah. Uh the behind the scenes thing on that was really cool because the directors went to him and said, What do you see for this character? And Willem Dafoe said, Well, He's, you know, he's older and I'm still doing my own personal yoga and fitness. He's like, I, I see this character juicing. And the directors were like, oh, all right. Juicing is in the juice. Yes, not the, the juice. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not, not shooting. <laughs> yeah. Not a fucking yeah. carrot juice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the whole byplay of that where he goes and he sniffs it mm. and then he just puts it down on the table. <laughs> Another interesting thing with that, if, if you noticed, uh, some of the transitions in this movie were really good uh-huh. and, and the cut scenes were good. So there was the loud engine noise and then that led into the juicer machine, mm-hmm. which was great. And there's little things, technical things like that that I loved. But yeah, Marcus, I I don't know. His alignment... Lawful neutral. Yeah, I know it's in, in the neutral realm. That's... Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, his character, he, he, had a, he is a mysterious character. There wasn't a lot of him, but Everyone his character else had a lot of him, weight. So he upheld the balance. That's yeah, why I'm I'll going say that way. neutral. And apparently extremely, uh, being an assassin is apparently <laughs> very, very uh, profitable because that yeah. brownstone, holy shit. Oh, not just the brownstone, that rifle. Oh, the oh. rifle, the multiple <laughs> rifles. Yeah. But then I like how he, he saves the day in that, in the... I want to go back to his death for a second. Oh yeah, please. Um, because you're 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 big into deaths. He went straight for the femoral. He oh, was bleeding God. out. Yes, and he knew it. You have about sixty seconds. Mm-hmm. And he went to he he was going to slaughter himself in honor guard to go to hell in style. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I fucking love that. Uh, <laughs> the, the comment, you know, if, if something like if I'm going to die, I'm going to do it on my own terms. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, and he just threw the punches and. No, it was it was uh, gorgeous. Yeah, and the music played so well with it too. Yeah, no, it was it was fantastic. And I personally, mm-hmm. I hope I don't die in bed. That was <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Nope, kicking and screaming and <laughs> cutting all about. It was good. Yeah, you had a uh, an evil henchman, Dean Winters, uh, Avi, who was the yeah. the right hand man to um, Vigo. He had some funny stuff going on in the background. I liked, uh, he, yeah, he had a couple lines. I, I liked Miss Perkins, though. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I also liked her fighting. Oh, her fighting was great. Yeah. Um, that, that was one thing I really liked about all this movie was you know how I, I normally pick apart movies mm-hmm. and I'll be like, that's not how you shoot. That's not how you fight. That's not how yeah. you. This was like 89% correct, which is amazing for a movie. Well, there was a, there was, um, the directors want it to be as real. So, I mean, they even, the real part, I agree with you also, I very much agree with you because they, the directors, um, wanted it. I will sit and watch a movie with guns. Okay. And mm-hmm. I don't know anything really about guns except you pull the fucking trigger, bang, projectile. I know a bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know you do. But one of the things that I do when I'm watching a movie, especially with, with a movie that someone's firing a handgun, is I count the rounds. Because mm-hmm. more more often than not, a clip will have 12, 12 rounds plus one in the chamber. <clears throat> Magazine. Yes. Magazine. Excuse me. Thank you for correcting me. I know that I always forget how to <laughs> do the difference. Um, so a magazine will have typically 12 and then one in the in the chamber. Correct? No. Okay, then. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. it's, it's, it's but still, dependent. It but doesn't matter. Okay, but still, being that... There's a, a point where you can count thirty bullets coming out of one gun, oh, and not agreed, yeah. seeing any. And the directors made a very good point to get to X number, be it nine, ten, eleven, or twelve, or thirteen. And Wick has to change yeah. the magazine out. Yeah, and I'll, that was I'll, one I'll of the things I loved about this. He was fighting. Yeah. Have you watched the videos of Keanu? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, on the gun the, the, range. Yeah, the yeah. Keanu operator videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my. God. God, they are mind blowing. Yeah, and he, they, the, yeah. the directors brought in like actual SWAT teams and SEAL teams to teach him how. It was f- apparently four months of intent, and he's done this for years. Yeah, and I really like that uh, that pistols weren't long range weapons in this. It was oh, up close yeah. and dirty, and I loved how and he I'm really always glad looked he, in everyone's eyes. I was really glad. <laughs> That bullets didn't curve in this movie. I was just about right. to say. See, what you guys are saying is you really want to watch Wanted. Oh my god, I do like the movie. It's a guilty pleasure, but Jesus Christ, oh my god, 
Fucking curve that bull. <laughs> Fun <laughs> video game, too. I yeah. never played the it's video game. Sure. Okay. okay. It was okay. Miss right. um, Perkins, I would have put it neutral evil. She did yeah. not obey the code. No. And she paid for it at the end. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that execution scene. Fucking oh Swergen. He will always be Swergen. He's to me. always Swergen. Yeah. Swergen. Yes. <laughs> he uh, is always cocksucker. Yeah. Yep. San Francisco cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, every time he does a cameo, mm-hmm. everything he does, uh, it's something about that that deep gravelly voice, which I wish to Christ I had. Mm-hmm. Um, it's he's 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 so good. Yeah. He is an asset to everything yes. he touches. Yes. I think only one other there's only one other actor that I can think of that I think could have done that role as well. Who you got? Sid Haig. Is Did you ever see House of a Thousand Corpses? Yeah, I didn't like it. He was the he was Captain Spaulding, the clown at I, the beginning. Yeah, mm. clown scene. Well, okay, Sid Haig is a classic actor. I think okay. he's as old, if not older, than Ian McShane. And he's just done a lot of really interesting character bits. I think he could have done that role. I'll look into it, but I can't. I don't. I don't know. I'm going to mention. Uh, it was a very bit character, but we were talking about the crow. And yeah. He was in the crow. Toby Leonard Moore. He played Victor the Cleaner. The oh, guy yeah. that came in. Yeah, he was. Oh, the, that guy was awesome. Yeah. yeah. The, the, well, the whole interaction between them was. Great. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to that see was you back. All his interactions. <laughs> yeah. Like he's on a first name basis with everybody. Yeah. You well, know? The, the cool thing with 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 him as an actor for this movie was he just came in just to read the part just to fill up space and the director's like no you, you we're hiring you for this part <laughs> nice. yeah. yeah uh and then we uh bridget moynihan we talked about uh, as the wife we yeah, didn't get a good we'll good ro- ro- oh, wait, sorry, no. <laughs> i was thinking the other gal what's oh, her that's name fantastic uh and <laughs> <laughs> the wife neutral evil yeah, we totally. keep a clean house <laughs> yeah. uh john leguizamo the great john like Legu- i like john leguizamo he's fucking hilarious in this movie he was such a small role yeah but it, yeah. But it was a heavy role was I it? I think it was. The chop I mean, shop guy. The chop shop guy, Aurelio. I mean, he the, the car comes in, and you can see on his face, he immediately oh, no. knows <laughs> what these yeah, guys like, did. Like, I'm not yeah. touching that for any. And, I and, love John Leguizamo. Oh, personally. yeah. And then Alfie's, and everything he does. Theon yeah. is like, hey, you know, you, we oh, own you. He tries you. to threaten him and whatnot. He tries. Yeah. And then he just fucking sucker punches him. And it's great. Yeah. And you feel so good. I like yeah, that. Happens. I like that, too. You struck my son. Yeah. I did, and but this is why. What what I what I liked about it is is the the editing on this whole scene that was going on because you can see that both obviously both scenes were filmed separately. They were supposed to be. Um, this was going to run with Keanu Reeves getting in into in, you know getting there in the bus and mm-hmm. then having his conversation, and then be, prior to that, it was going to be the the conversation with Theon. But then they intersected everything. He takes keep, the fucking bus to keep the. <laughs> The tension going, you know, it's the the tension is always yeah. mounting in this movie, yeah. and that's one of the things, many things that I love about the movie. But the the conversation that you just you know hearken to about the you know with with v, with uh, with Theon's dad Vigo and uh, Aurelio is like I I I heard you hit my son. Yeah, I did. <laughs> he stole John Wick's car. Oh, and it's the first click. laugh in the whole movie. It's oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're like you're going through this it's like there's no laughter no there is another laughter point prior to that that i i'd like to circle back to it's um when everybody comes to john wick's house to kill him mm-hmm. and the cop shows up oh yeah that was great <laughs> yeah you uh you working you working <laughs> just dealing with some things have a good he takes his hand <laughs> off the gun yeah have a good night see you jimmy so yeah, first name basis with everyone. He knows everyone. Yeah. But the the whole scene with the chop shop with Arello, there's there's also so much going on in the background that I like because you have this this world, this whole assassin world that Yeah, in what world did the cop not not? I mean, well, even even a paid up cop. No, but you have this whole assassin world that that lives in these old school this old school honor system and does things and you this was With the good coins. thing. You, this was the good thing I, about the sequel, about the I about love the, how, the, the whole yeah. the, the old school stuff. But this whole world that is so rooted in this old time honor, and then the car, you know, the, and then the cars. You see a Ferrari. You see an older Porsche. You see it's this great juxtaposition of old versus new. Yeah. 
And then also with the color palettes that, that go on, and, and I can just geek out about this for so long, but we only have a limited amount of time. I really we're, like we're, this. I really like really this movie. Yeah. Um, and we haven't even gotten through the whole cast yet. <laughs> well, uh, and, then, well, and then Ian McShane. Yeah, we already talked about him. A lawful neutral. Yeah. Yeah. yeah All yeah. right. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight lawful neutral. Because <sighs> he's not on the side of good or evil. That's not his business. He doesn't give a shit. Yeah. He cares about the law. Yeah. That he's full sure. on law. Okay. You do yeah. not yeah. do anything here. I'll go with that. Yeah. Yeah. That that sort of. Although he did bend me. a little bit and tell where Theon was. That's not bending. That's entirely to the law. That's off property. You know? True. Okay. And then uh, Lance Reddick, who played the Loved hotel him. manager. And you get to yeah. see more of him in the second, yes, which is do. something I really yeah. like. He was a great, he was another character that came in just to read to yeah. fill up space. And I'm like, nope, you have the part. Don't worry about it. Yeah. George. I love that actor. Yeah, me too. Everything that I've seen him in. And, and apparently he went to the directors and said, I, I want to I want to have an African accent. And they're like, um, sure, roll with it and see what we'll see what how it sounds. And he came with this, you know, African mm-hmm. accent and it was perfect for the character. Yeah. He um, his voice to me is the same kind of really that the voice affects me in the same way as uh, Robert Stack. Oh, oh yeah. Unsolved Mysteries. Of. Yeah. They have he, he it's has the that same timber. Yeah, yeah that, that cadence that he yeah. talks. Like him in when he was in The Wire and but and in Fringe, both of just that the way he pulls his wrist up and his, his trigger, like, <laughs> he is he is always playing like an official of some yeah, kind. Yeah. Because he does it so well. I could see him playing president in something. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. When when I first saw this movie, I actually saw him behind the counter and I'm like, Okay, there's the boss of the boss. I, did, of the I thought boss. that too, yeah. Just out in the yeah. open, like I I fig- I the exact same train of thought. I was like, "Oh, that's how that place works." Yeah, but yeah. I also loved the camera shot of when John Wick came in and the down on the the desk uh-huh. and the the you put the coin out and then it it was there wasn't a lot of pause between the hand going out and then the other hand coming and taking it. It was just like, yeah. And I thought it was it was just it was a nice little camera shot. I what? tip everybody. That's what? my philosophy. <laughs> what was that actual location? You know? uh, it's in New York City, just off of. So just, uh, it's an actual yeah, hotel. it is an actual yeah. hotel, okay. but the interior was different. Gotcha. You know, but uh, yeah, that's a great hotel. I'm gonna do him lawful neutral as well. Ne- yeah, I think he would be totally <laughs> lawful neutral. neutral. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like neutral. I said, I, I, the puppy may have been good. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> the, all. The I puppy got. was good. Yeah, the puppy I'm was good. I'm still thinking Wicks lawful neutral personally, but yeah? I can also see, I can see the case for lawful evil. He fit lawful neutral for me personally, but yeah. I think this was a lot of lawful neutral. That was one of the like, things I liked about yeah. this movie was that there was no uh Dudley Do Right, big chin, golden, fair haired boy in this. This no. was this was dirty, this was expedient, and it was honorable. Yeah. And I loved it. I also the I've talked a lot about what I like about this movie. <laughs> what do you like about it, Matthew? I loved the fighting. Oh, the I fighting loved how was... accurate it was. Oh god. I loved how uh, realistic it was. I liked how it combined many different disciplines. Someone's a great shooter. Mm-hmm. Someone's a great wrestler. They were using a lot of militant wrestling moves in mm-hmm. this. Ugh, fuck, man. I mean, if I was going D&D, John Wick would have, would have been a rogue with a heavy skill tree in shooting and wrestling. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was... I'll, I'll definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's what it was. The close quarters was brutal. It was mm-hmm. accurate. To say like uh, some of the the knife fighting disciplines, uh, some of the control disciplines, some of the pressure points, some of the the arm locks, mm-hmm. oh, and the yeah. foley for that. <laughs> oh oh <laughs> my god! Yeah, there was so much. I think for they <laughs> wasted so much celery. <laughs> there was <laughs> there was so much on the technical. I think there was more for me on the technical side of the movie. I mean, I love the movie as a whole, the story, everything, but I just geek out so much on the technical side of this movie. Just yeah, yeah. There, there was a couple of things that didn't earn it the hundred percent. Like what? Uh, when he was uh, using uh, the assault rifle, mm-hmm. the triple barrel no, shotgun. No, 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 no. J- just the the regular old. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Just the regular old the M4 heavy clone. Gun? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, those things have a, a problem. I, I have one. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're notoriously easy to unseat the mag. Okay. And he was doing. 
these great fast changes, but he never gave it that bottom tap. Ah, uh, okay. Because uh, maybe maybe he was good enough that he doesn't deal with that. But that that's something that's is trained into you because I've taken tactical courses in mm-hmm. that. That you always reseat that right after you jam it in. You, ne- would, you never I, I trust no that because they will fall straight the fuck out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I really something liked new. the contrast between the clearly beautiful gunplay of this and the fucking terrible gunplay of the very first movie we ever watched as a group. Suicide Squad. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You're bringing that back. I, 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 I try and reference that as many times no, as yeah, I, I know. Can. I know. <laughs> I really liked how there was no spray and pray. Everyone was going for shots. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every, everyone, it, was, it was all focused. Yeah. Everything was focused. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody f- really fired from the hip. There were a couple of uh, in reactions. The club. A couple in the club. That's within five feet. Okay. That's totally legit because okay. you can get that. But if he's across the room, you don't go cack, cack, cack or from the hip. Yeah. You you aim and you fire and it's close. It's never you know this this beautiful stretch of shooting pose that a lot of actors seem to think it is. It's it's hunched over, small target, crouched. I th- it was great. minimized recoil. Yeah, I think more uh, stunt coordinators like because these two guys, the two directors, were stunt coordinators for a, for the Wachowski movies, for the Matrix, uh, for Point Break, for a lot of movies. They were they've always had their not just hands, they've been fully immersed in stunt coordination. More stunt coordinators need to be directors because... Oh, agreed. Because yeah. you see the things If you're that, doing an action film, yeah. fuck yeah, they do. Yes, so will, more stunt coordinators. Please yeah. do action movies and be realistic because they took the time... And if you time, can't, make them listen to you. Yeah, they took the time to be like, this is how this is going to work. This is how this fight is going to work out. This is how it's going to look. This is how the ca- camera angles... And then they composed everything with that also. And it was it was good. Yeah, it was fantastic. Good. Okay. Good. Yeah, it was well done. What did what did you like about Nathaniel? I know we've been I, I've been stealing the spotlight on no, this. No, that's fine. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed Okay, so we talked about this before. I don't like unstoppable badass heroes. I like my heroes to have, or I like my badasses to be human mm-hmm. and to to have more than just super heroics or superpowers or whatever. I like them to be human and have skill. Like uh, the argument could be said that you know, oh, V was you know pretty pretty awesome and pretty powerful, but the difference is that V was like V was fucking superhuman, whereas John Wick was just competence a dude. porn. That's what you called it, competence yeah. porn. That's it. Yes, like we talked about in sneakers. Yeah. I like seeing really capable people be good at what they do. And that this to me was competence porn from the beginning to end. John was just always good at what he did. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's yeah. one of the reasons I like Batman, because he can stand toe to toe against Superman, who is a I can, super. I can see that. I, I see Batman as being a superhero whose superpower is being infinite rich. wealth. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So yeah, I. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> Batman's. I have weird feelings on Batman. I, I'm just yeah. saying it, it's it's that same sense of human taking on impossible odds. That okay. I, I also find very attractive. No, so I, do yeah, I. Definitely, yeah. I liked I liked the gunplay. It was fluid. Oh, so it good. was cool, and yeah. it wasn't you know, it wasn't sloppy. It wasn't Hollywoodized. I liked the fact that every time he, you know, shot someone, he he was aiming at them mm-hmm. and he was looking at them, and yeah. he was just like, "Boom, you're dead. Boom, you're dead. Boom, you're dead." And he was so good at it. Yeah, but I also, he also got fucked up. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He, he he was damaged, and and he took a lot of damage. I mean. The guy the 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 guy that played uh, in the Matrix movie the, the the key maker was the guy that sewed him up and gave him the the, yeah. the, the pills, uh, and then oh oh what was her name uh, Miss Perkins when she came in his room and she's just wailing on him she finds that wound and just starts fucking yeah. jamming at it yeah the blood spurt now and he's taking massive hit point level is like ding ding <laughs> ding 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 basically ding. yeah. I, it also reminded me, um, in a way, of uh, a more... Okay, I can see an evolution. So if you watch the Daredevil show... Uh-huh. Which I don't. On Netflix. I do. I think it's episode two or three, which has... The Hall fight? That fight. I've yeah. heard... I, need, I think I just need to watch it just for this... I'll put it... Bring up on YouTube before I go to bed and just watch this scene, because it, I've heard it's amazing. It YouTube has... Ep- Awful yeah. compression. Just watch I know, that. I know. Watch that Netflix. Bit. It is an amazing... First off, it's a really good show. Mm-hmm. It's a great okay. show. I mean, right. it's got great actors. Uh, it's it's see, at least season one. Yeah. Season two's whatever. Season one's really good. But this scene, that hallway fight scene, to me, John Wick is like 
let's just take that further. Yeah. Okay, now let's add some guns because it that fight scene was him was that character in the early stages of his career and what I can see is that John Wick is kind of a progression of how that's you know. No, I, I can okay. see what you're you saying. You see what I'm saying? Agree, like a, yeah. Like, um, that's level one. <laughs> <laughs> John yeah, Wick he didn't even have his costume yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, I, I like it when a hero takes damage because it adds an immediacy. And you and I, when we fight, we take damage. Mm-hmm. And so that there, there's a connection point to them. And what makes an ordinary person a hero is striving beyond the easy, the attainable, yeah. and pain. And I, I like to see my hero take a dent, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was, it was relatable. It's yeah. Oddly. It was oddly <laughs> relatable. Like, if I'm ever going to murder somebody or a whole bunch of, oh, hey, I know you're not doing stats anymore, but I know you know the body count. What was it? Oh, the body count. Yeah. It was a <laughs> funny, body little, count. funny little story there. It's, if I remember correctly, it's about 252, give or take. Jesus Christ. Now, the funny thing about that, why I know this, not looking it up for, for the movie or for the podcast or anything, it was uh, s- right around when the second one came out. Somebody had posted this meme of who would you rather have next to you in a fight? Oh, yeah. And it was like uh, Bruce Willis from Die Hard. It had John Wick. It it, it, it had you know, James Bond. It had a, a number of Not people. <laughs> had a number of people. And so I had nothing go on. My work day was done. So I was like, okay, let me let me run the numbers on who should actually who I would want next to me. And I broke it down like James Bond over all of his movies. There's a total kill count of like 30 people over X amount of movies. So that's like one person a movie. Okay, I don't want him next to me. What it broke down to is John Wick has one movie and 252 people dead. (laughs) I'll take John Wick next to me every single time if I have to have a choice. If If he's an available... Option. <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, I think Bruce Willis and Die Hard would actually be better because no. I don't know that John Wick would care about the person next to him as long as it wasn't his puppy, his car, or his wife. Or if you paid him, okay. or if you okay. paid him, you're stretching. Yeah, the no, scenario. no, that, that, you're stretching the scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give him a coin. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, <just> give him, <laughs> I do know that John McClane would get you out of there alive. Yeah. Okay. There's. I, I don't disagree with that, but and throw Germans off the roof. You know, actually, I'm going to go with Brock Samson. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Brock that's, Samson. That's Venom, right? <laughs> that's no. for the Venture Brothers. That, oh, okay. No, I don't, I don't, that I don't mullet watch. I'll take, bro- I'll I take Brock I Samson over that. John Wick. Oh. <laughs> I don't watch that. You see, that, Who that's would one win? <laughs> Fuck yeah, yeah I'll, take, I'll take Rick over all of them. So. Fuck, John, Brock Samson would. Soak up a lot of bullets. He would close soak up distance. a lot of bullets. <laughs> and the more he got shot, his face he would just, just get angrier and twitchier. <laughs> yeah, and his eyes would kind of pop. It's uh, the guy who did the voice actor for the original Tick. Um, oh yeah, Patrick did, Warburton. Yeah. Oh Patrick. Okay, cool. yeah, nice. That's Brock Samson. <laughs> okay, all right. You you've never seen the Venture Brothers? No, you I've need heard of, to see I, the I've, Venture Brothers. I think I'll, you would I'll actually like it. I've a lot. I've heard yeah. this from multiple friends, uh, 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 Dustin Honey, and Jason. You need to see the Venture Miles Brothers. Miles have all been like, <laughs> you need to watch this show. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll put it on the list, just like the stack of fucking books I have next to my bed that keeps getting taller and taller that I need mm-hmm. to read because some people don't have the ability to speed read like other people at this table. Sorry, superhuman, <laughs> lamest ability ever. <laughs> I'm envious. Well, uh, what else we got? I'm I've I think I've said all I need to say. I, I really like this movie. Yeah, I, I, I wish we could I would love to talk beat by beat on this movie, <laughs> but I think we'd be here for three or four hours. Yeah, yeah I think we would. Um because oh I love this movie, but it was good. Yeah, it was really good. So if you get a chance, if you're listening to this and you get a chance and you haven't seen it, go see John Wick. It is it is it's delightful. And this podcast has spoilers, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. We're we a little late that. on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, <laughs> whoopsie. Incidentally. That's not a boop, 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 boom. That's a whoopsie. <laughs> So, all right, I guess well, this is where we're going to take a break. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and take a break. I want to roll some dice and kill some people. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> get a drink, go to the bathroom, whatever we need to do. And we'll be back in just a little bit. Uh, I'm Dusty. Oh, God, we didn't do that either. No. Nope. I'm Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're a little off on this. I think uh, we're always excited to get into this. I it think. was a really good movie. Yeah. It was a really all good right. movie. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> He's Nathaniel. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see you in a bit. Break time. Hi, everyone. This is your favorite host, Matthew. 
This week's episode is brought to you by Guardian Games, who we are proud to have as our sponsor. Guardian Games is Portland's largest gaming store. They have almost every game you can think of, be it role-playing, board game, card games, miniature games, even video games. They also have a ton of gaming-related material and some pretty neat swag. I mean, the D20 fuzzy dice that go in your mirror, that's good stuff. If, you, uh, <laughs> if you're 21, uh, you can have a drink in the back at the Critical Sip. Booze makes gaming better. Always has, always will. There's free games back there. You'll love it. Uh, they also have a friendly and incredibly knowledgeable staff, and they are the hub of a diverse and friendly gaming community. Um, if you're in Portland, you definitely want to go to Guardian Games. Aside from that, let's... <laughs> We are back that from was a, our kind of break. An evil laugh there. That was I can do much evil or oh, so I've been I. talking and <laughs> I think that's how yeah. you should enter that. <laughs> oh, you're back from we are back from our break. Oh, <laughs> evil Doctor Cole. The evil Doctor misses the monarch. <laughs> <laughs> you do that to oh. stir. Well. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> it was a Halloween costume one year and it was amazing. Which was which amazing. version did he go through? Oh, Jackie O. You did, you did I think the, I've the, seen the photos purple. of you on like yeah, your old, I, I, on, on your old I, I live cannot, journal. Yeah, I cannot even bother pull it, trying to pull off the Doctor Mrs. the Monarch. Couldn't do that. No, I just don't have the curves for it. <laughs> <laughs> you do. But uh, we are back from our break, and now we're going to talk about some game shit. So, guns. Yeah, guns. Lots like and lots and guns. lots and lots and lots of guns. Yeah. If you're going to play a game inspired by John Wick, you need some guns. Uh, gun porn, gun... That kind of harkens back to like the scene in The Matrix where where they're in The Matrix like, what do you need? We need guns. And that like <laughs> warehouse just yeah. appears and it's like, okay, yeah, that'll do. Yeah, you can probably think of John Wick as uh, Neo's little VR extravaganza <laughs> while no one's looking. He's like, I'm going to go play with those guns. In the yeah, it's his video game. <laughs> have, have either of you uh, read, uh, I know it's a little side tangent off the game, but have, have either of you read that the the theory that John Wick is actually uh, one of the, the Neos that just didn't do well and he's just running in another Matrix simulation? I like that. I, I, no, I oh yeah, it's like great. There's a whole a bunch of like, it's like theories you're not out the there. chosen one, but you're really, really good. <laughs> yeah. So there's a, there's a whole bunch of like Matrix John Wick theories out on the web that they're really interesting to read. Some of them are shit, but there are a few that are like, oh wow, I can I can really see that happening. Yeah. So that, if you get a chance, be, go out and Google it. It's they're they're fun. They're they're good reads. That could be an interesting background lead in if you want to connect things. Yeah. I think in order to do a game based on this movie. You need to really focus on gunplay. Like yeah. You, heavy combat system. Heavy, heavy combat system. But I think it works best if it's not a super drawn out combat system. Agreed. So, yeah. Because despite the fact that the directors and the stunt coordinators focused on as realistic combat as they could, mm -hmm. I would never want to play this game in the most realistic games out there because you have mechanics which are like, okay, now we need to calculate the trajectory. Okay, yeah. That's going to have a minus 0.05% to your roll. And then, about, okay, you're sweating, so your grip's loose. So we're going to have a little bit. And there are games out there that do that. Oh, yeah. Tactics yeah. games are actually kind of fun. I don't know that they're role-playing games because yeah. role-playing games to me is a story Yeah, more than other things, but... Tactics games are a lot of fun too, if if you're bent that way, and sometimes I am. So there is a game that uh, that that has a combat system like that. It's called Phoenix Command. Uh -huh. Well, no, no, well, that's the the larger world <clears throat> combat one. The the smaller single person one is called Living Steel, and it's one of the most awful things I've ever read in my life. <laughs> uh, I cannot recommend anybody ever play it unless they Living are Living Steel, if you'd like to crazy. sponsor us, please contact us. <laughs> I, think that game, I think that game has been out of print since like the early 80s. What's the, what's the name okay. of it? Living Steel. Okay. There's also Phoenix Command. They're, they are <laughs> notorious for the super complex rules like pages upon artillery fire and calculating right. all that stuff. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, but I don't think that would work for this. 
if I was going to play John Wick at the table, I want combat to move. Yeah. I want to feel that rising tension, that momentum. And all of that dies when you're just like, okay, now roll, roll to hit. Okay, you miss. Oh, no. No, you roll. Right. Okay. You, you now, need a mechanic yeah. to, well, to wade through yeah. moves. Now I've got to spend an action to reload. Right. Uh, oh, I, I hate got that. To, yeah. You want fast I and flow. I hate that. So just uh, to kind of go circle back, Rick of the Living Steel. Uh, it was published as a box set in 87 and then republished as a single hardbound book in 88 and has long since then been out of print and the publisher is defunct. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. I, a buddy of mine has a copy of it. I can have him bring it sometime. But no. we're not going to talk about <laughs> yeah. it. No, no, no I'm, I'm fine. So, yeah, I'm fine I without want, it. I want dramatic gunplay that doesn't feel fake. So I don't want... I mean, you know, ammo counting is fun. I want to be able to, to to at least incorporate some level of realism, but I don't want to have like that kind of action economy where everything slows yeah. down. Mm-hmm. What this is your move action, this is your action action, this is your free action. Yeah. This yeah. D and D would not work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. So I would had initially thought, oh, you could do D twenty modern. Which is what no. I would go with because that's what I'm familiar it, with. I don't think it would take... I don't think guns are good in D twenty modern. I think guns in D twenty I, oh, your gun does 2d6 damage. No, your fucking gun just killed that dude. Yeah. I don't think D20 Modern would actually work for it because of its firearms rules are pretty crappy. Mm-hmm. They're not really that much different than crossbow rules huh. or bow okay. rules yeah. from standard D&D. That was where it got a lot of flack. But, uh, Matthew, I think you got something. Oh, yeah. I have a, a little story hook for this. Now, Ba-ba-bum. this is uh, should be taken into consideration that in most movies there's some people alive at the end yeah yeah the, there's something you can work uh, with unless you're cabin in the woods yeah now um in john wick all you have left standing <laughs> is john wick which would be fine if you want to play uh-huh. him but if you want to play with your friends that'll be hard that's that's better served as a video game but you've mm-hmm. also got swedgen yeah all that's left is the continental which in <laughs> itself is a fascinating place Oh, my God. Yes, it is. You're talking a big, opulently appointed uh, hotel run by and for giving all the services of for assassins. They they have their own hierarchy. They have their own services. They have their own lines of supply. They live in a world which I, I think it's safe to assume that the cops are for normal people and not assassins, mm-hmm. judging by the one interplay with law enforcement. Yeah. yeah, I get yeah, that I would, as, well yeah. as well. Like yeah. they they are above. Yeah, mm-hmm. the the it, for yeah. whatever reason, the the assassin world does not connect to the police world that you, me, and the guy who bakes your bread live in. That's considered the norm. But what if that was to change? And that's all I can really bring for this. So here's what I got. Uh, you'd be playing the cleanup crew. Uh, you you, you <laughs> saw the the cleanup crew for the Continental. Or as I like to call it, the Continental Cleanup Crew, the Triple C or Mm -hmm. CCC. You are tasked with the elimination of those who break the rules and traditions of that establishment. So you get to have a party. Uh, We saw a four-person party at the end take out, uh, what was her name, Mrs. Uh, Perkins? Yeah, Miss Perkins. Yeah. That's who you'd be playing. Mm -hmm. You would be the enforcers of the rules of of that hotel slash underworld, which I think... Extends far beyond that hotel. And they're above the assassins. Yes, yeah. because the assassins need them yeah, to need live the in the yeah. world. They, 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 they are a, yeah. a, a necessary part of their universe. Mm-hmm. Inviolate. No, no one breaks that. Okay. So you're there with your party, and you're drinking in the bar after successfully killing whoever. And a contractor, a, an, an assassin, goes rogue in the bar, starts shooting. The people on stage die. Mm-hmm. The bartender takes one, maybe a waiter, mm-hmm. maybe another assassin. And as this is a room filled with assassins, response is pretty immediate. You all turn, you see him, and you begin to open fire. At that time, shots begin ringing in through the windshield, sniper fire. Mm-hmm. Everyone, everyone, you should play that scene out immediately, yeah. too. In media res, just yeah. kick the game off yeah. right there. <laughs> that, that would be great, yeah. Everyone takes cover. Mm-hmm. The rogue contractor makes his escape now this is obviously your your initial your initial uh thing is that this is as he opens fire is he's just gone rogue he's drunk he's forgotten the rules okay 
But as the sniper fire begins to rain down, you realize that this is something just a, a little more. This is a setup. This is something. Now, a, a good DM would throw something out about a, uh, a, a false flag at this point, something about maybe a new organization is looking to discredit uh, the Continental, maybe looking to pick up their business. If people aren't safe in the Continental, mm-hmm. if it's no longer sacred ground, then why would people go there? Why would they use its services? It's just like everything else. There's going to be a series of these types of strikes. People shot going in. The doctor who services them killed. You know, just a har- harassing fire, basically. Mm-hmm. The Continental is coming under siege, and no one can figure out quite why. Is it a rival organization moving in? That's what the players have to figure out. As it turns out, behind the scenes, you as a DM would realize that the police have a new chief who is looking to clean up the city. He's done with Whoa. crooked police, mayors, and oh, city officials. You have, you have a hero in town. He's using his SWAT forces to put pressure on the Continental and make its patrons feel unsafe. He's hitting them in the security that they offer. He's not directly going after the assassins. He's going after their home, their safety net, their hunting ground, their supply line. Mm-hmm. During one of these uh, attacks or efforts... The uh, the player party should discover or manage to make their way to one of the, the snipers. And they find out that they are, in fact, SWAT. Now, they can follow this trail up all the way to the chief of police. Mm-hmm. This isn't just a random cop or group of cops thinking it. This is actually the city striking back at the lawless elements within it. So, as an evil-aligned party, or at the very best neutral, you have to go and kill this shining hero who is trying to bring justice and order to the streets. And that's my hook. I like that. That sounds like a really fun game. Yeah, it does. Wow. Uh, yeah. Plus, it's it's just fun to play evil sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah. can be. So the problem with playing evil is oftentimes it's the people that want to play evil that you got to watch out for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you'll, you'll have somebody who's like, yeah, I want to play like a uh, chaotic evil yeah, out, out, <laughs> out. I'll, I'll out. let anyone play any alignment, but I prefer it if it's lawful. Well, there, that, there has to be a system they rule, they run in. Yeah. I was like, like I, I think I commented once before that I, I ran a D six, uh, star Wars, the old, uh, West end games, star Wars session. And one of my, Biggest mistakes, and this was nothing on you the person. Like somebody, yeah, there was yeah. nothing on the person because there. Were, this this person was a really good role player, but I allowed a Sith to come into our party. There's yeah. your problem. Yeah, it's like allowing. It's like old school D and D allowing the the dark elf assassin to join their group of heroes, and suddenly everybody gets their stuff stolen and then murdered in the middle of the night, and, and never, you know, yeah, like, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, morally gray games. <laughs> <laughs> Are a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think, again, to do something like that, you need to sit down with a group before you even start playing and make sure that everybody's on the same page. You have to make them like, understand the right. world, too. Yeah. And make them also understand the code of honor. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, we are the bad guys, essentially, but we're the protagonists. Yeah. However... We're gonna we're gonna lay some rules here. We're not gonna murder children. We're not going to engage any kind of intensely morally reprehensible actions. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, we're you know just we're just gonna yeah, yeah we're just gonna murder some cops. Yeah, <laughs> why not? Yeah, yeah. No. sure. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, like you do. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, the whole stylized kind of uh, again, this is everybody should of course be on board with the fact that this is not modern times this is this is, this is yeah. the comic book world mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah this is an alternate whole alternate, alternate setup yeah well there's a few games i got that that work for that so i'm going to start with an honorable mention only because this game is no longer in print and this game is called haven city of violence <laughs> <laughs> it is the role-playing the game good. of modern violence so haven is the actually the first game that i thought of when i watched john wick mm-hmm I'm not going to go into it too deeply, but uh, it is it is uh, inspired by things such as Frank Miller's Sin City, John Woo's Hard Boiled, and James O'Barr's The Crow. Uh, it is a question. What the tagline? Damn, my nipples is, are hard. I want to say a little bit more than the nipple. The tagline is: It's not a question of good versus evil in this game. It's a question of evil versus evil. Make all the right choices, and you can become a king in Haven. Uh, 
so it is it's a cool game i love the it's 90s-tastic kind of art but it and has 90s-tastic fonts yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it is really it's a dark game of the criminal underworld okay, okay. what i like is that it has a completely different combat system for hand-to-hand versus Oh, that's that's interesting. It go, even goes into it. It's like how is a how is a gunfight like a knife fight? It's not. So we have a completely <laughs> different rule system. Excellent. So the the, the image here, they doesn't have him hammering it up like you made comment. He just has it sliding in. Yeah. <laughs> so there's actually it opens up with a completely wordless. Oh, yeah. I that's like what that. I was starting to look this at. This whole because the artwork comic looked great. Is some aspects of it, but the whole opening intro comic tells a story of assassins trying to kill each other with no words except I like that, one yeah. at the end blam yeah <laughs> uh the reason Interesting. this is an honorable mention is one uh, it's no longer in print the writer made a second version of it as a source book for d20 modern oh and, yeah uh, i don't really i don't think d20 modern would work for this so it's done by lewis porter jr uh lpj design you need to put your game back out in print because I actually prefer this far more than the D20 Modern version. So please bring it back. Thanks. So the next game was an honorable mention. The next game, of course, Shadow Run. Oh, nice. That's an old favorite. Yeah. Well, Shadow Run has gets a bad rap because it does. It's it really super does. I really like its firearms rules. I like the fact that even the shittiest small pistol with a good shot can do an insta kill. Like you. If you're good at what you do, you can use the shittiest weapon and still murder people. Yeah, because guns are lethal. <laughs> guns are lethal. And especially in this system, I like its system of wounds. What I don't like is everything else yeah. of the mechanics. No, it's, I agree. It bogs down. So if we're just doing guns, I think it could work. I have a I have a longtime buddy in Phoenix uh, who's also another, another writer. And uh, he's run... A Shadowrun game, I think, for the oh, there last it is. 20 years, I think he's been running the same campaign. I have this one. Yeah, I have that one, too, tucked away. Just I have that book. on my shelf, too. And, uh, and What, what also... they're looking at is the inside. This book, sorry, Dusty. It's okay. This book is the 20th anniversary edition, and it's fourth edition. However, the inside cover shows the original cover from yeah, the first edition book. Yeah, in. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's a good one. The, the scantily clad, sorry to steal it from you, the scantily clad uh, woman with her with magic. Abilities. Oh, yeah, she was like way cool. Yeah, yeah. I and first then the, the splicer and then the, the 80s hair and makeup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, Shadowrun uh, can Jack typically so be run in what's one of two modes that people generally classify the way to play the game. Either black trench coat or pink mohawk. Yeah. So this would you could play it. I think this would be black, black trench, trench coat. coat. Yeah, <laughs> isn't isn't this the version where it's the, has the long story in the beginning about the elves and everything returning and magic returning and to uh, run side by side. All with, the, yeah, all, Shadow okay. runs. That's what Shadow runs. Yeah, yeah, I know, but the there was it just had a really long like. 15, 20 page yeah, th- intro. Yeah, that's an old friend. Yep, and I'm it glad is. I got yeah. a mention because that yeah. flashed in my mind too. But uh, the the elves, the orcs, the yeah. You would have to cut all of that out. I'm yeah. just talking about using the mechanics. The, 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 the core uh, template of Shadowrun is you are a group of criminals mm-hmm. doing crime for money. Yeah. And you have a lot of sweet gear. Yeah. So Shadowrun is a gear porn kind of game. Like a lot of the game is about customizing your gear, your gear, mm-hmm. making money to customize your gear even more. So if all you did was focus on the group template and the guns and cut out the world, you cut out the yeah. world, you could use the core Shadowrun mechanics to pull that off. Cool. I interrupted right. your story. You had a friend. Oh no! And he, I, I, I finished that actually. Uh, He's been running the same Shadowrun game, I think, uh, for like twenty years. Nice. Uh, and he's also running the same uh, Vampire the Masquerade game for like almost the same amount of time. He's a hardcore gamer. Um, so uh, it would seem. Yeah, 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 yeah. We actually, as friends, we had a really rocky start in the beginning. But uh, no, he's he's someone that I uh, will occasionally chat to with uh, on on Facebook when I'm in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. I, I've tried to see him, and he's a, a writer also. Um, he's got a few books out, so yeah. I might have I, I can swear I've told this story before, but I ran Shadow Run. It's the game I ran the longest. You did in my teen that's, years. That's a good story. Yeah, and I, I once had upwards of like twenty players in it. Oh, that's too many. Because I just couldn't turn people away, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. I was you know I was a teenager, I was new to gymming. I was like yes. 
I am cool now because if anybody <laughs> wants to play in my game, yes, you can come play in my game and became a LARP. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we started like cutting out rules and we put dice, six sided dice in those uh, gumball machine poppers. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You, you, you know, a little. Yeah. Plastic yeah. dome with a thing mm-hmm. on the pop. Well, we just put dice and we would LARP and we'd shake it. And that was our action. Huh. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Anyway, sh- again, a lot of work has to be done to make Shadowrun do this. But I think if you take the core system, uh, Shadowrun could pull it off. I've played some sweet gunfu games in Shadowrun. Yeah. But the game that I want to talk about is basically John Wick the game. Now, this game came out, I think, in 2011. And I have a fun intro to this. In our Cabin in the Woods episode, which fortunately had some tech difficulties, so we're going to try and bring that back later. One of the games that we talked about is a game that my first published game called Cannibal Contagion. Mm-hmm. And I released that, I think, in 2008. And at that time, I was already working on a follow-up game. And that game was what I called a bullet drama. And it was going to be called Billions and Billions of Bullets. Now, my game company is called Alliterated Games, and at that time, I was trying to, like, how can I alliterate all of my game title names? I've got a lot of them in store to maybe use someday. <laughs> nice. But Billions of Billions of Bullets is going to be the third one, or the second game. So you have a file of bullet points? I actually have. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> on Somewhere around here. Uh, oh. It used to be really close with the. I have an ammo case full of bullet shells <laughs> because I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I don't even see. It. So I went to the one of the to the Aloha Sur, Army Surplus yeah. Store and bought one of those thin green ammo mm-hmm. cases mm-hmm. full of like two hundred bullet shells because uh, the game was going to use a series of tokens that you represent how many shots you have, and I had an interesting system of using. Uh, so I'm probably never going to do this. So if you're listening, feel free to use this mechanic where I was using the Trivial Pursuit cheese wedges mm-hmm. as your life counter. Oh, I can see that. It, it was fun. It was yeah. a new mechanic. It worked well in playtest, and then I, I lost track of it. The game that I'm talking – oh, what happened was that I was going to bring it back and you know actually make another attempt mm-hmm. to bring back my my notes and do some stuff and try and actually – maybe I'll publish this game. And then I read this game that I'm about to talk about. And this is basically the exact same game that I was already putting mm-hmm. together. It doesn't have the cheese wedge or anything. Right. But it even has a lot of mechanics very similar to Cannibal Contagion to the point that transitioning from one to the other could be a smooth experience. And this game is called Hollow Point. I, I, I do like, uh, right off the bat, I, uh, not getting, I'm not trying to steal your thunder on this. I like that the, dis- the disclaimer... Right on, on like in the first couple of pages. And you mind if I read this real quick? Go for it. Disclaimer. This is a game that deals with torture, execution, terrorism, and other illegal and immoral activities. It is a form of make-believe that some people will find offensive or unpleasant. But it is just a game. It's safe and no one gets hurt as long as everything stays at the table. Do not do these things in real life, please. Play games instead. <laughs> That's <laughs> one of... That's not quite my favorite game intro. Uh, there's a game from, a, uh, I think, a, I want to say New Zealand or Australian company called Dirt Merchant Games. Mm-hmm. And they released a game called Hole, Human Occupied Landfill, H-O-L. <laughs> and it opens, up with the, uh, with the, it opens up with what it's called a claimer. It says, claimer, this game will fuck you up. And it goes through all of these things, and eventually you will worship the Antichrist and jump off of a Jesus. jump off of a local theater with seven running chainsaws strapped to your body during a matinee. <laughs> Bambi, uh, it's well my done. favorite game introduction ever. So, Hollow Point comes close. <laughs> Hollow Point <laughs> is bad people killing bad people for bad reasons. Mm-hmm. Hollow Point, you are an agent. Oh, I'm going to read the back because this describes John Wick. You, uh, no one in this game is innocent. You are an agent. No one ever messes with you because you are that far above the common herd of men that sleepwalk through their lives. You get things done, and that usually means blood or pain. Or, when you're feeling generous, death. Inspired by every ultra-violent action movie you've ever seen, Hollow Point is about being that good at something that bad. Make no mistake, you will be a very, very bad person. 
Uh, so this game uh, is designed by uh, Brad Murray and C.W. Marshall, and it is it builds itself as a role playing game. I it, it it is in some ways. It, it is in many ways. It has many elements, but this comes from a style of game design uh, that is more story game. And it's very yeah. procedural flow to it. Mm-hmm. It's done in a number. You know, it's a scene structure that builds tension as you play. Your characters are all kind of like the movie. Kind of like the movie. Yeah. Uh, there are basic components. So it uses six sided dice. And in this game, uh, the core components are the Agent C, which is, you know, your team works for some organization. The mission. Mm-hmm. So you're being sent to do a number of missions, uh-huh. uh, probably one or two during a game session. And the agents. This is the three core components. Three is a kind of a recurring number because. When you set the game up, you, you sit down at the table together. We, you know, okay, what are we going to play? We're going to play a game with a lot of bullets and death. All right, cool. Sweet. Somebody pulls this out, and that's all you come to the table with. Okay. As a group, you put together the agency. You talk about what is the agency. Who, who, are, who are we working for? The first step, you answer some questions. First question, what kind of agency is providing the missions, and what does it protect? This choice is called... The charge. The next choice, what does the agency destroy? This choice is the enemy. And finally, the third choice is, when is the game set? This is the era. And here are some examples. James Bond. Mm -hmm. Protect England from those who would harm her. Your enemies are supervillains and global terrorist organizations. And the era is a 1950s era. Everyone smokes, dresses well, and the cold world, cold war colors everything. Contrast that with G.I. Joe. Cobra! (laughs) The charge, defend freedom, democracy, and free market capitalism. Fight Cobra! (laughs) The enemy, supervillains and organizations intent on evil for no clear purpose other than that they can. Cobra. And finally, the era, near future, no one smokes, even the tough guys are clean, military color rather than civilian. What I think matches most is the one in the middle. And this is based on a comic series called 100 Bullets. The charge, perpetuate the balance of power between the criminal families in the trust. The enemy, inter-family strife in the crime syndicate. Right. The era, late 90s to present day, a more street feel than Bond, a cheap black suit favored over a tux, and crime is the international intrigue. Kind of close. Yeah, yeah, it comes really close. Yeah, it does. Your character is a list of stats, or, or skills, really, that you rank 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. Okay. Uh, so, And you might have more than 6, but th- you know, they're standard cool, kill, uh, uh, terror, things that you might make happen in a game. Yeah. You're not going to have skill barbershop. You're not going to have skill accounting because nobody gives a shit about any of those things when in a bullet drama. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of hogging this moment. Do you have any questions? Yeah. How does how does combat work? That's so because yeah, this is combat. Wondering. So yeah, it's if it's this, all combat. This is combat. So combat is done with a series of dice rolls. You each have a pool of six sided dice. Okay, so this is also asymmetrical play. You have a game master or a ref, they call them, and you mm-hmm. have the players. And the players are playing agents, but they might not always play the same agents because agents can come and go. You can die at will. Right, And by choosing to die, you add more dice to the rest of your team's pool and you bring in a new character and the cycle rotates through. But uh, the GM has their own dice pool and those are managed differently. So the GM rolls a number of dice and the players are rolling a number of dice. And ultimately, the players are trying to defeat the challenges that the GM is setting forth. Right. So in a scene, you can either role play out and seek out some goals or you can come to a conflict. Mm-hmm. So this is why I say it's more of a story game because story games tend to focus more on the concept of scene and conflict. Well, traditional role playing games tend to focus on more of the open ended, go with the flow, roll the dice when you want to overcome a task. Yeah. This is definitely more story procedural. So everybody has dice pools, and your dice pools are going to be equal to whatever skill you put forward. And you can't always use the biggest skill because you tag them and you knock them off. Uh, Each skill, uh, if I remember correctly, it's that they can't be used in succession. So you can't always hit the big one. And sometimes you won't be in a scene where you can use your 
your best get your cool sometimes you'll have to use your kill and for some reason you made a character with a zero kill and why did you do that in a game about guns <laughs> right but uh <laughs> so what you do is build the dice pools Tag whatever skills you're going to use. You go through some back and forth, some you know, add some flavor, add some description, set the scene. Now mm-hmm. it's time to roll the dice. Everybody rolls the dice at the same time. And then you separate matched dice. Okay. The game is based on uh, how many sets of dice you can build. And a set is ranked by two different numbers. Mm-hmm. How long the set is, so how many matched dice. Okay. And how high the set is. The die value. Okay. All right. So you, you know, so like four sixes, is four long, six high. Right. Yeah. Okay. So whenever you do something, so what you do then is you arrange them by length, or sorry, by height and then length, or maybe it's length and height, uh, and then whoever has like the best on the table gets the gets the first action. Right. And then they target whoever else they want. And they say, okay, I'm going, to attack, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to take an action against you. And they describe the action. And then that person takes their lowest or whatever the lowest, the highest, okay, the highest set of their lowest length. Oh, right. So, like, he had five sixes. Uh, excuse yeah. me, five threes. Five threes. But the other guy had three sixes. Yes. The guy being attacked had three sixes. Is mm-hmm. it like the number differential there? Or? So the guy with the five threes, I believe, would go first. and then they, But he's attacking the guy. Let's say the other guy has a set of three sixes, uh-huh. a set of three twos, and a set of two ones. Right. Forget the two ones. He just has a set of three sixes and a set of three twos. Okay. So the guy attacks him, and then he, the guy being attacked, would knock a die off of his three sixes. Because it's the highest of his lowest run <laughs> okay so a better example would be if he had uh four threes and then two sixes two fives and two twos okay okay so right. he gets attacked mm-hmm. he knocks one off the two sixes because it's the highest and then that's the no longer a pair or and greater it's no longer a pair. so that is yep. out of play out of play right okay yeah i got that so you essentially are dice whittling each other right but you only so whenever you go, you take your highest row, and that's your action. Mm-hmm. You still only knock one dice off of another person, but the, the the highest determines initiative, and then you take that out. It's gone. It's done. Okay, so my question. Yeah. Are you attacking the other players this way? You can. Because then we could change everything. Then you just become three different names for John Wick. You can. Because <laughs> that would be yeah. fun, too. The, the book yeah. kind of encourages some aspects of that kind of stuff. There's Your characters aren't always getting along. But yeah. you are mostly working together to overcome uh, the, the enemy. Right. Okay. That's an interesting pool. I've, yeah. I've, never, I've never even heard of anything like that. I like it because it's dice, and I have thousands of them, and I love them. Yeah. I, I love dice matching. Yeah. I love it. It's so fun. Yeah. yeah that, that's interesting. I, I could see that. One thing I really like about this game is, well, first off, it comes with two uh, scenarios to play through. One of which is uh, agency working working versus like some Russian spies. But the second one, it's called Behold a New Creation. Mm -hmm. Player characters are angels hunting down the fallen angels and other immortals that were on the wrong side of the war in heaven. All right, That's it's not Wiccan, the... but I'm I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. It's just an interest, It's an interesting optional scenario they yeah. include in. But then the last few pages of the books are printable handouts, uh-huh. a field guide that you can hand, like a memorandum. Then each one of these is like, here's a guide on how to use personal weapons. Here's a guide on grenades. Here's a guide on shotgun. Two pages of shotgun data. Uh, multiple pages of guns, fighting, knives, pistols, ammunition, submachine gun. First aid, and it's okay, all now, written as now, if they are memos to actual oh, agents. Wow, now, nice. this I like because your cost to get in is only the cost of the book. Which is only 20 bucks. On because it. everything else is printed, and you can just hand out the relevant sheets. Yeah. To the, I like that yeah. a lot. Yeah. Not, you that, don't have to have a... A DM, a DMG, a monster's manual, and yep. everyone shows up with a player's guide, and pretty soon you're talk, looking at a thousand dollars for this game. Oh yeah. yeah, that's one of the things I've always disliked about gaming. Yeah, is the is the the cost. enormous outlay. This is 
meant to be a pickup game. Your character fits on an index card. Mm -hmm. Right. Like your character is literally a name, a list of like six or so skills, and then a list of maybe five traits. And traits are one shot things. They're either a description of yourself or an item that you have that you can sacrifice at any point to get two more dice. Okay. Cool. Yeah. You just knock it off. And the characters are meant to be expendable. So in something like John Wick, well, John's not really expendable. He's just going to be around. But if we're going to play in the, the campaign that you talked about. Or he's just a about, successful version of this. Yeah. You know, someone yeah. who got lucky. There like are it. additional layers to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, slightly more advanced play. But that's, yeah. that's the basics of the game. Okay. Yeah. I'll play some Hollow Point. Yeah, so would I. Right, All right. All right. Yeah. So John uh, Wick. Hollow <laughs> Point. John Wick. Yeah. Hollow Point. There we go. But yeah, you know, anyway, Hollow Point is more of a story game, but again, we're half movies will game, not necessarily half movies will RPG. Mm-hmm. We kind of lean towards it, but I, I like I really like that it is for everyone at the table. One book does that. One book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you just grab a photocopier and run it off. Yeah. yeah. Or even just print it off. Is it available? It is available in digital format. So too. you can just yeah. get the necessary sheets. It, they, they might even have because I'm, I'm holding my, my, you can't see this because this is audio, <laughs> but I have my hand lovingly spread on shadow run. But in order to do shadow run, everyone shows up with the shadow run book. And then there's the various weapon guides. And mm. I mean, I, I just really like that you could get all your friends playing for 20 bucks. And it's not a thick book. It's, 108 pages. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Forgot about that, my that's, alarm. That's, that's, that's very sweet. It's, I it's, forgot it's, about my alarm. Lisa wasn't serious this time. <laughs> forgot about my alarm. 108 pages. <laughs> it is a fast-moving game that focuses entirely on what it is to be a, an assassin. Yeah, because I can't yeah. think of anything that would kill John Wick <laughs> faster than... You don't do anything that doesn't three involve hours being an assassin. For okay, combat. I, I, there's yeah. no context here, but I like this. I just flipped to this one page. Effects. When you get hit in hollow point, you take effects uh, from the damage. If you can't stop a hit from a kill roll, you are shot. Blah, 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 blah. But here are some things that happen. Like if you kill, first shot, shot or cut, second, bleeding out. Terror, first, hesitant, second, babbling. Take, first, missing something, second, emptied out. If other skills are in play, other effects need to be determined. Like seduce, first, you're charmed, second, you're fucked. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. I yeah. had nothing to like the, yeah. the the context be before that point. I just flipped to it and it was yeah, hilarious. This, this would uh, be a good thing to play with an experienced group, especially one that's heavy into actual role playing and yeah. visualizing. I think this could also be played with complete noobs. Yeah. I think this will, in fact, seems like it. I think these kind of games I actually find are easier to play with people who don't. Or aren't expecting Shadowrun. Right. Like, if you go to a convention or you go to a party, this is meant to be, like, picked up and played. They're like, hey, let's play a game. You're like, okay, I got a thing for you. Have you ever played any of these games? No. Great. Yeah. That means you're not going to come with preconceptions. You're just going to kind of go with the flow, and it'll be easier to teach. I know that when I was first introduced to story games, I fought against it. Because it was so different than the D&D that I have been playing for so Mm -hmm. long. Yeah. And I wanted so badly to hate it and to hate the guy that introduced me for ruining my game night and now i thank him <laughs> profusely you know who you are thank you all right cheers well done uh, so what, what do we have coming up uh next is going to be one of your favorites you've just been waiting and i waiting have and, and i want to hear you say and it. waiting it is <gasps> bum, 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 bum. Big Trouble in Little China. I'm not going to say it's the best movie ever, but it's the best it's, movie it's, ever. It's in, probably in my... Yeah, you could take that to the bank. It's probably within <laughs> nice. my, in, yeah. in, my, in, my, in my top 20. Yes, sir. Yeah. The check is it, in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> there are movies that have good one-liners. And uh, this has them up too. <laughs> all the good one-liners you will ever I, I, need. I, I have a story during this, when we do this one uh, next time, I have a story where I was, I was over at a uh, bunch Save of it. friends. I know, I'm not going to go into it, but was, we were watching it and they're like, oh God, that's dusty. And I was like, what? So I will go into that next time. So yes. So we had John Wick for the evening, followed by Hollow Point with a runner-up of Shadowrun and an honorable mention of Haven. Haven. City of Violence, which sounds like it'd be a cool movie, actually. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. But, you know, he just sold they, they it off it. after the first yeah. one. Yeah. He just dialed it in. The scene was nice, but I couldn't get behind the protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did there? Yeah, I, All right. I, I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On Thanks for note. listening, everyone. I was Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Or in two weeks. We'll see you when we see you. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're a new name in the enormous sea of podcasts and appreciate any feedback that you can send our way. If you like what you've heard, or even if you didn't, please leave us a review and let us know. Got a movie or a game that you want to hear us talk about? Drop us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com or hit us up on any of the usual social networks. We'd love to hear from you. The opening theme music is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, part of the public domain and found on publicdomain4u.com. Opening narration is provided by Isaac Scher. Have Movies Will Game is distributed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you again next week.